If you think your clay soil is incapable of growing anything, well, we've got the perfect plant that requires clay soil. Or, you know, a lot of times I always talk about planting up container plants and I say that we need to use a potting soil rather than topsoil. But today we're going to talk about how to divide our hardy water lilies and you do not want to use potting soil because it will float in your water garden. So this time of year, late uh, spring, our water garden water is starting to warm up and a lot of our plants are beginning to grow. And before they get too big, we want to divide those. So here we have a water lily in front of us. This is a hardy water lily. And the roots on a hardy water lily are a rhizome. So kind of like an iris, if you think about how an iris grows, you've got this underground stem and we're going to look for several different growing points. And those growing points are where all of these leaves are coming from. So we have one here in the corner. We have another one. Looks like we have about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll probably have more once we start getting in there. So we're going to go ahead and start breaking these out um, and we'll show you how to divide those. So what you're going to use to divide this is something like a hoary knife and this is one of my favorite garden tools. You've got a nice serrated edge and then a pretty sharp point on it and it's just nice to be able to get in there and separate stuff. If you don't have one of these, a regular serrated kitchen knife will do the job as well. You just want something that will really chop through these roots because they're pretty uh, involved. And so you're going to cut these between the growing points, almost like cutting a potato between the eyes a little bit. And you can be a little rough with it, you don't have to be too concerned. Now you'll see that this particular water lily was planted in pea gravel, which you could also use. Um, the pea gravel sometimes is a little bit nicer because it breaks away from those roots more than the soil will. So you can see here we've broken off the rhizome. And this is our growing point right here. So this is the old growth. And basically this is what's taken up so much of this room is all of these are expanding and growing like this. And so as these rhizomes get bigger, it crowds the plant in the pot so there's less room for it to grow. So this is the point we're concerned with. And in fact, we're gonna break that off even a little bit more. So now we have a smaller plant that we can plant up. After we got that one giant hardy water lily divided, we actually came out with 11 additional water lilies. So you can see here they're much smaller, but this is going to be better for growing in this container and give it more space now. You can see our container is well aged in the water garden. We did rinse it off, but we don't necessarily want to scrub it because this is actually good bacteria on here. So go ahead and leave it like this. Now when we plant these, we want to make sure you can remember our rhizome, we kind of broke it off a few times. And so the growing point is over here. So this is where it has already grown and that's what we've removed. So we want to make sure this is closest to the edge as it will continue to grow this way all season long. Now in a container like this, we're going to probably go ahead and plant two lilies. So we'll do one on opposite corners here. And we're going to do like what was previously in this pot and use uh, some pea gravel to plant in. Now after we get a good layer of that in, we're going to just mix in some slow release fertilizer in there and that will encourage those roots to grow deeper into the container. Rhizomes tend to grow a little bit more shallow so having a wide open container is great for them versus one that's too deep. But this will allow those roots to grow more. We're gonna mix, we're gonna mix that in. All right, so now that we've got a good amount of uh, pea gravel at the base there, we're gonna go ahead and set our rhizomes on top of that. Again, you wanna make sure that your cut in is towards the container and your growing point is towards the center so that it can continue to grow. 
and then we'll cover it with some pea gravel to anchor it in. When we add this pea gravel, we want to make sure that we're avoiding those growing points to prevent any damage from them with a the rock. Now this rock is going to anchor these in and allow those uh, rhizomes to put more fibrous roots down into that pea gravel where we've mixed in that slow release fertilizer. You can use, um, as you saw, a granular, we used a granular slow release. Um, you just want to make sure that it has a higher middle number because that's what's going to give you those flowers. There's also some like lily tabs and things like that that you can use uh, regularly throughout the season and those work just as fine. So this is one way of doing this with pea gravel, but one of the cons to planting as pea gravel is you've got a lot of extra weight when you have to drag this back out of your water garden again. Now, if you have water lilies and you need to buy some pots, we want to look at the different pots that are available to you. This is one pot that we have here, and I like it because it's got a wide mouth to it, a little more wider than it is deep. Um, it doesn't necessarily have as good of handles on it, but what's nice about it is there's no holes in the bottom of this. Water lilies are completely submerged into the water garden, so any water is going to come over the top. Having holes is just going to create more of a, a flow of that water through there, pushing out some of that soil and things like that, whatever media you use in here. So this is nice because it doesn't have holes. Now this one is often touted as a water garden uh, plant container. Um, I find that these work best for bog plants, plants that are going to be on your shelves where they just like to have their roots in water but aren't necessarily completely submerged. A lot of times, um, you know, if you plant a bog plant in something like this that doesn't have holes, you might not put it all the way into the water level and you think it's getting water, but because no holes, it's not getting the water it needs. This will allow that water to flow through there. And it'll also allow those roots to take up any fertilizer that your fish might be providing. So that's another option. Now these are pots that are kind of a little bit more pricey, but for water lilies, you could use something like this. And this is just a kitchen dish tote or tub. It has a little bit of a handle on either side. It's definitely wider than it is deeper, allowing those hardy rhizomes to grow across it. And so this is a great option as well. So we're gonna start out though with just this container here. And this is another way to plant a hardy water lily rhizome. If you don't want to use the pea gravel, what we have here is just your cheap run-of-the-mill kitty litter, which is actually just clay. So if you don't have Oklahoma clay soil, this is another option to use. So what we're going to do is that same process where we put a layer of this clay kitty litter in the bottom. And then we're going to once again mix in some of our slow release fertilizer. Now for this container I'm just going to put one water lily in here. Again we're going to put the cut point a little closer to the container and then we will backfill with more kitty litter. Now again, this rhizome's not rooted in, so sometimes they'll want to float out, especially as the pads hit the surface of the water. So what is recommended is really to just put a rock on that backside of that rhizome to help anchor it in. Now a lot of times if you have koi, the koi will want to dig around in these new plants too. So a lot of times people will put a whole bunch of larger sized gravel across the top, and that's perfectly fine to do. But you can also just get larger stones and set them around and that will help deter those koi from digging around too much too. So this one's ready to go in the pond. For our next one we're going to use good old Oklahoma red clay and a few other things that we might have laying around your garden. We all tend to have these black plastic pots that have holes in them so maybe not ideal for our water garden situation because some of that soil can come out. But how many of us have grocery sacks laying around the house too? And this is a great way to recycle both of those. 
we're just going to put one of those plastic sacks down in the bottom as a liner for that to help kind of clog up those holes. And then we're going to fill in our clay soil. Now we're going to layer a little bit of our slow release fertilizer in here just because it's a little bit more difficult to mix in. The clay will actually help hold the fertilizer in a little bit better versus some of the other media that's a bit more porous and might allow that fertilizer to get into your pond. So we're going to add another lily here. We just have a single one. We're going to put in there, cut side towards the side and the growing point towards the center. And then we'll backfill again with more clay. The nice thing about this clay versus the kitty litter is it packs a little bit better. So it will hold those roots down more so than the kitty litter will. Again, we're going to go ahead and put a rock on the back side here just to anchor it down a little bit more. Uh, being careful to avoid that growing tip. Again, if you have koi, you might want to put a few more rocks in there just to prevent them from digging around. And this will be easier to pull these out when you have to repot versus having a lot of loose gravel in there. Now the trick uh, to keep the soil from getting murky in your pond is just to slowly put it down into that water level. You don't want to just throw it in there too quickly because the soil will come up and make your pond dirty. Um, but eventually it will settle so there's no concern really in that. These are three great ways to plant hardy water lilies and I hope one of them works for you. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.